Hey everyone, today we're going to actually write some code in Swift. Um, to accomplish this, we're going to look at the playground to well, play around with code. So let's open it up and well, give it a name. It doesn't really matter, but it's something that will help you remember possibly what you were doing during this session. I'm just going to name mine learning because we're just learning. So let's uh, click next and choose where we want the file to go. Just the default folder is fine. And let's start playing around in the playground. There's two important keywords we're going to learn about today. Let and var. Let is used to define a constant and var is used to define a variable. Before we go any further with these keywords, I wanted to say that to create a comment, use two forward slashes. So let's just create a quick comment right here. Comments are good for you know keeping track of what you're doing in your code. Um, for a project this small, I'm not going to really use any, but it's always a good habit to keep. Now let's play around and create a constant. Let's call it number. So say let number, and let's give it an initial value of five. And if you see to the right, the things we create in the playground actually appear on this right hand uh, plane. And so now let's try to change the value of number, which is going to, of course, give us an error because number is a constant and you should not change the value of a constant. If you click the little red ball, it's going to show you the error that it's receiving. And if we want to change the value of something, we should make it a variable instead of a constant. So let's go do that right now. Let's delete let and we'll call it var number. And when we do this, we're creating a variable number that is equal to five. And then on our next line, we are changing this value to four. And this is an okay operation to do. So briefly, I wanted to go over defining types. And by types, I mean like uh, int and double and float and string and the kind of types you would normally see in C or C++ or even Java. And how in Swift, you do not have to explicitly give a variable or a constant a type. So you see here, we created a constant number and we gave it uh, basically a double value. And we're going to create a variable, and we're going to give it a string value. And this is just to kind of demonstrate that um, we created two different types, but we did not actually say what those types were, and the compiler had no issue with that. Um, here, I'm just going to change the variable again, just to show that it is a variable that is a, a type string that we can actually change the value of to another type string. Uh, now we're going to create uh, some custom background colors. Uh, the class to create a color is going to be a UI color, and that just stands for a user interface color. So let's call this background color one, and let's say it equals UI color. And when we do this, we're going to get a bunch of different. Uh, initializers for the class UI color. We're going to choose the one that we can actually enter RGB values for. Normally when you enter RGB values they are usually 8-bit numbers so they range from 0 to 255. Um, this case is no different except for that it wants it as a fraction of uh, 0 to 255, so it really goes from 0 to 1. So what you're going to do for each value you enter is just divide it by 255, or if the value is 255, you can just enter 1. It's basically uh, your preference. And after we enter the values, we should get a preview on the right-hand plane to see what the color will look like. Um, if you click on it, you can actually get it to show a larger view of what it looks like. And this would be a good time to kind of play around and find maybe different colors on the internet you'd like to reproduce and see what they look like. Since we are finished with uh, background color one, 
let's move on and create another background color. Um, we're basically going to just do the same thing that we just did above, except for we're going to have different uh, red, green, blue values for this color. So we'll just enter UI color again, go down to the RGB one, and enter the different values. And so let's see what we get. Um, this should be a different color, should be closer to yellow from what I picked out. And if you get an error, just make sure that you enter the correct ratio because I find that sometimes you'll forget to divide something by 255 and you'll get uh, white, which I did here. So let's go back and fix that. Now we get the correct color. Um, and that does it for today's lesson. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, and please join me next time when we go over how to actually use this in our next project.